Good morning, good morning, and happy, happy Sunday. It is good to be in the house of the Lord to worship Him, honor and praise the name of our Almighty God who causes us to be here and gave us this opportunity to be together. Let us continue on our emphasis for this month on be strong while waiting on the Lord. And today, allow me to share a message entitled, Wait and Gaze into His Promises. Wait and Gaze into His Promises. May I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Psalm chapter 25, verses 4 to 5, and then on to Psalm chapter 130, verses 5 to 6. Psalm 25, verses 4 to 5, and then Psalm 130, verses 5 to 6. Let us meditate together upon the word of the Lord from the psalmist David. He said, Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me, for you are God my Savior. My hope is in you all day long. And then on to Psalm 130, verses six, uh, 5 to 6. I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits. And in His word I put my hope. I wait for the Lord more than watchmen wait for the morning. More than watchmen wait for the morning. May the Lord add His blessing upon the hearing and the reading of His word. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful day that you have given us, allowing us, O oh God, the opportunity to gather together to worship, honor, and praise your mighty name. Thank you so much for all the blessings that we receive. And Lord, more blessings will come our way as what you have promised. If we just trust you, if we have faith in you, you will grant the desire of each one's heart. Father, I pray that you search us because we know that your power knows each one of us. If there are needs right now, O oh God, of healing, of provision, of hope, through your Holy Spirit we pray that you will provide each one of us with whatever need we have according to your will. Thank you so much for your presence in our midst. Help us to know your will, your plans, and your perspective in our lives. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray, Amen and Amen. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, I want to declare to you today that God is a promise-keeping God. God is a promise-keeping God. All throughout the Bible, we see that our Almighty Father is faithful. He keeps His promise as He said to those who calls His name. To the people of God to live daily trusting in His promises. I remember Dr. Charlie, Charles Stanley, the late Dr. Charles Stanley. In one of his devotionals, he said, Practicing patience is difficult. Practicing patience is difficult because it often goes against our expectations and our desire for immediate results. That's why people will jump into conclusion. People could not wait. This is especially true when we are waiting on the Lord and His timetable doesn't match our timetable. In such situation, brothers and sisters in the Lord, my friends, it is important to remember we can't go wrong waiting for the Lord. Blessings will come in God's good time, in God's perfect time. And that can only happen when we refuse to run ahead of Him. We ask the Lord for what we think we need, based on our limited information. But the power of God, His understanding is infinite. At times, 
God simply says no to our request. In other cases, he may adjust our desires to match his, not the other way around. And sometimes he answers in a way that looks nothing like what we requested. But it will be exactly what meets our needs. It is exactly what God wants us to have. And then we say it's worth the wait. A submissive heart to the Lord. A committed heart to God. Accepts the omnipotent Father's gentle direction. Recognizing that the God of the universe... That the God who created everything is always right, not only once, but in all the time. So as we wait upon the Lord, let's meditate upon His promise. Because waiting patiently on the Lord strengthens our faith in Him. As we live day by day. Hour by hour, minute by minute, we learn to rest in His loving care. And accept that whatever He gives us is the best for us. It is also used by God so that others will know that He loves us and that He cares for us because He provides for what we need. Who those who see his care in, and faithfulness through us then may choose to put their trust in him as well. You can be channels of blessings. God can use you so people will know that he is gone. Let us learn together as we look into the book of Psalm. The Psalm of King David and all together, let us follow his ways in waiting while gazing in the promises of God. Here are two important thoughts that I want to share with you all today on the promises of our Heavenly Father. Two important thoughts. Number one, wait and gaze into his promise of straight path. Wait and gaze into his promise of straight path. His promise of straight path. Psalm 25 verses, or Psalm 24, or 25 verses 4 to 5. Listen to this. Show me your ways, Lord. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your paths and teach me, for you are God my Savior, and my hope is in you all day long. Do the promise of God find such a welcome in your waiting? Can you like hold on for few hours, a few days to wait on the Lord? If not, my friends, here is one suggestion that I can make. Know the ways of the Lord. And to know the ways of the Lord is a starting point for us to gaze upon his promise of straight path. The psalmist is not contented on just knowing the path of the Lord. He wants to continue gazing, expecting for more. And now here the psalmist wants to be with God. Now to be with God is not just few hours that we will meditate upon his words. Not just few days in our lives. Not just on a specific day in a week. But to be with the God, God is to talk on God, to talk to God in every path, in every way of our lives. King David was not satisfied with only waiting and knowing with God. He wants more of what he can expect from the Heavenly Father. 
Waiting was hard for him in so many instances of his life. The psalmist David was desperate. The psalmist David was in need of help, especially when the enemies were seeking to inflict harm on him, or even the enemies were seeking to kill him. And that's the time he wants to seek the Lord. That's the time that he wants more from God. And someone said that life is a journey of a thousand steps, not a single one. This is something that works in David's life. David's word recognizes with clarity. Wisely the psalmist said to know the way of the Lord and the right path can let him follow him every step of the way. No turning right, no turning left, straight, looking into the eyes of the Lord Jesus Christ, looking into the eyes of the Almighty Father. David does not lean on his own wisdom. David did not apply his willingness to make his own directions in life. But rather, the psalmist asked for God's guidance, as we see here in Psalm chapter 25. When he said, show me your ways, God, his prayers honor the counsel in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, that we always hear, that some of us memorize, that says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Not only a part, not half-hearted, but the whole heart. Now, through this psalm and through the reminders, we as Christians nowadays, we as followers of the Lord Jesus Christ, can trust God for our whatever we need, can trust Him and can call upon Him as long as the psalmist Trust in God, we can also trust God and continue to seek His will. And brothers and sisters in the Lord, God will grant the desires of your heart as long as you remain faithful to Him. As long as you continue to serve Him. As long as you continue to call upon Him. He may not have promised you a particular thing. But listen to this. He has not left you promise less. Promise that he will direct you to the right straight path. Promise of comfort for the comfortless. Promise of help for the needy. Promise of provision for those who need help. Promise that he opens the door when we knock. Promise that we will find when we seek. Promise that He will give when we ask. All this and more, many, many more. His promise to you, His pledge to me, to His people who are waiting upon Him. I will, I am able. So let us fix our eyes in God alone. Let's gaze upon the power of that Almighty Father who was so loving to us that He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be with us. That was a promise, the greatest promise that He gave to us. God, through his promise of life eternal. God through his promise of straight path. Will make our crooked heart. Our crooked places. Our crooked path straight. That we will just let Jesus. Be the Lord of lords. By his wonderful grace for him. To reign in our hearts. And no one else, even ourselves. Let the Lord Jesus Christ sit in the throne of hearts. 
so that people will know that we are Christians, that we love the Lord Jesus Christ. I remember Max Lucado shared his own idea about God, by his grace, changed a person's heart in sharing this story entitled, Grace is God as a Heart Surgeon. Grace is God as a Heart Surgeon. This means when God through his grace comes into us, cracking open our hearts, our chest, removing the heart poisoned with pride, poisoned with pain, and replacing it with his own. Rather than telling you to change, God in giving you this heart creates the change. Do you clean up so he can accept you? No. He accepts you first and then begins cleaning you up. His dream isn't just to get you into heaven, but to get heaven into you. And that's why when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, we have that chains of heart. For those who are in Christ, for those who believe in the Lord, old things have passed. New things are becoming new. What a difference this makes. When you have a change heart, nothing is impossible. When you make God, when you allow God to change your heart full of sin, full of pain, full of punishments in there, God will change that heart that will be pleasing to him. Can't forgive your enemy? Can't face tomorrow? Can't forgive your past? That the enemy is digging every time you think about? My friend, Christ and our Almighty Father can help you. He is on the move in changing all of that every day. Knocking into your heart's door. Let me in and give you this kind of heart that will glorify the Father. Aggressively budging you from a graceless to a grace-shaped living. From a heartless kind of life to a heart full of living. The gift given, giving gifts, forgiven people, forgiving people. I don't know if that's hard to do. Only God can make that change. Again, it is easy for us to forgive when we accept the forgiveness of the Lord. The crooked heart, crooked life, crooked path of the past is a heart, is a life full of deceit, perverse and wicked. And the place of wickedness in the Bible refers to most often is the human heart. As Jeremiah says in Jeremiah 17 verse 9, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? This heart Full of deceit leads to life not pleasing to God. Leads to life not on a straight path. And praise God the Father because we can avail of His promise. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. Acknowledge Him and He will make your path straight. However crooked your life is, 
however crooked your ways is, God can change that. God can make this path straight for you. It is a path made by Him for each person that fits our desires, that fits our beliefs, that fits our experiences and feelings according to His will. Many in the world are walking in a path that simmeth right into a man spiritually and emotionally when they seek fulfillment in the things of their world of this world, like pleasure, prosperity, wealth, and power. And then they will do the best thing they can to accomplish this path. They will twist, turn, bend around, and expend a lot of energy, but never reach their destination. Heard a story about, a lot of story about that. The best story that I can share is the miner in the Bible. This man have everything in the life in his world. And one time he said, Saul, you have everything in you. Drink, eat, and be happy. But not, not all. That's not everything in our lives. To others, the not so straight path is to be religious. Doing things that the tradition says. Others' straight path is doing things on our own way. Again, nothing that we can do can make that path straight. Only those who follow the Lord Jesus Christ, those who are called believers, exposed daily, but trusting God every day. The path that is straight is the path that God desires for each one of us. Because straight path results in a heart that seeks to be right with God, that seeks to be right with other people, a heart full of humility, a heart full of goodness, a heart full of honesty. Because that heart was changed by God. That heart was the throne of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is sitting in the throne of that heart. It is a kingdom heart, a heart that loves God. A heart that loves others before itself. It is a heart filled with humility. It is a place made by God and by His power He will make your path into His path. The path that can result in a life controlled by the Holy Spirit. A life Reigned by the Lord Jesus Christ. A heart surrounded and surrendered by submitted submissions to God. And the result is awesome. Result is awesomeness. Being happy in worshiping. Being open in praising. And always desiring to obey. And to be faithful and trusting the Heavenly Father. When you have a heart like this, my friends, it is a transformed heart. The heart that went into spiritual heart surgery. The heart of a new creation. Because when God makes and gives us a new heart, the crooked mindset is fixed. Straightened. Life of sin receives forgiveness. Lives bound to hell redeems, uh, receives redemption. Redemption restores our hearts and back to the condition of the human heart. Hearts made originally by God that obeys Him and trusts Him always, never giving up a bit. 
never surrendering to the world, never raising hands to surrender to the enemy that is still so active in this world. Hearts belongs that belongs to God receives blessings from the Lord. Number two, wait and gaze on his promises or his promise of hope in the future. His promise of hope in the future. Look into Psalm chapter 130 verse 5. Again, King David said, I wait for the Lord. My whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. In his word I put my hope. To wait in the sense mentioned, mentioned here by the psalmist is to live expectantly. With awareness of how God has acted in the past and how this anticipation of what God is about to do. Waiting is the opposite of despair. Waiting is the opposite of hopelessness. Waiting is the opposite of tiredness. Waiting for the Lord is like the work of the anxious watchmen on the city wall who, fearing the attack of the enemy, finds relief in the arrival of the morning sun. The certainty of the coming light makes clear that the waiting is not delusional and unrealistic. This is the nature of the psalmist David writing and waiting for the Lord. What a great example here. The psalmist David said, I wait for the Lord more than the watchmen wait for the morning. And he said it twice. Because with God's past faithfulness still fresh in our minds, my friends, we can dare to look towards the future with hope like the rising of the sun in the beautiful morning if we just trust the Lord no one can stop the sun from rising the God of the universe will make it to happen we can take our stand like a watchman on the walls and say with defiant faith, I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word, I hope. Because the word of God is honest. The word of God is true. It is profitable for each one of us to trust in the word of God. God's promise now no longer seems like an empty word. Or just a wish list, which we don't know if it will come into fruition. When we hope in the Lord as He promised, through His Word, it will come as surely as the dawn. After a quiet night. So my friends, to wait on the Lord is to trust that God is at work even when his timetable is longer than we'd like. It goes against our nature. But part of the problem is how we define waiting. But the Bible says waiting involves actively walking in step with God as he unfolds his plan. Every step of the way. My thoughts are not your thoughts. My ways are not your ways. Our goal is to walk with the Lord. Not just sitting around. Twiddling our thumbs. Waiting is what happens between the promise and the fulfillment. The success of waiting. Is to experience the fulfillment 
of what God has promised to us. If we learn to wait on the Lord, we will see him do great things in our lives. So don't get tired. Sometimes God uses waiting to help us to see his promise of better future and embrace it more joyfully when it is made clear to each one of our lives. I remember one benefit of waiting for the Lord is often revealed only with time. We look back and see how God worked things all out. We can look back to 2023 and remember all those things, what God has done to us, and then forget what God can also do to us when we think about Him in the future. Let us remember all those things. Just because we can't see God at work before doesn't mean that God is not at work. Doesn't mean that He is not at work. The how and why are God's responsibility. Ours is to rest in the Lord and wait patiently for Him because in the waiting we build our trust in Him. In our lives, we have looked up. In our lives, we can look back. But let's not stop in there. We need to look forward to the hope of the future. God will help us find our, ourselves. Find the things that he prepared for us as long as we wait upon him. Either way, one of the things that we are blessed is today. We have today to live. We don't know about what will happen tomorrow. But today, let us wait on the Lord and know His plans and know His perfect will. Because by doing that, we can experience the greatness, the glory of God. Let me close with this. King David, while waiting, he prayed, Lord, teach me today. It's just like saying, Lord, lead me today. It's just like saying, Lord, help me today. Let today be marked by present obedience, joyful submission as we all wait on the Lord. The God of waiting has good works for you to walk in. Look over his promises. And hope in Him for your future. For good future are in your prayers with hope in the most powerful being who is in control of every aspect of your life. Every aspect of our lives. So my friends, brothers and sisters in the Lord, let us continue to the work of the ministry in every way we can as God called us or where God assigned each one of us, for we have each one of us as a part of God's plan of making this world a better place for everyone. If we have someone right now who are still asking, how can I know the plan of God for my life? My friend, know the Lord. Accept Him as your personal Savior. And start gazing upon His promises. Promises of good future. Promises of life lived according to his plans. Without him in your life, you can do nothing. Without Christ in you as your savior, you can still look into yourself as lost. You need a change of heart. You need God to do that spiritual surgery. Ask him to come into your heart and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Ask for the forgiveness of your sins. And he is faithful and just to forgive. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that today we can come to you. We can honor you and we can glorify your name. Lord, I pray that as we wait, help us to look forward to many promises that you have given us year 2024. In this year, O oh God. 
of peace, of abundance, of your protection. In Jesus' name we pray. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you now and forevermore. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all.